people usually come in because they're looking for one of the technologies. And that always leads into the discussion of, well, why do you want hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Why do you need cryotherapy? And usually it's a chronic issue. And I will always tell them, listen, you can do this. This is going to basically treat the symptoms and help, help your body recover from what's damaging it. But you got to start at the foundation and the foundation is going to be diet. Welcome to the Plant Free MD Podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Plant Free MD. I'm your host, Dr. Anthony Chafee, and today I have a very special guest, Mr. Victor Mu, who is joining us from Hawaii in the very early hours of the morning. Victor, thank you so much for joining it's my pleasure, Anthony. Aloha to you and aloha to everybody around the world watching this podcast. I'm really looking forward to having an a, a interesting uh, discussion with you. Absolutely. So, Victor, if you wouldn't mind telling us, uh, what do you do? And, um, and how did you come to, uh, to, your, to where you are right now in, in, in your field? Well, right now, I have a uh, human optimization clinic here in Honolulu, Hawaii. I consider myself a human optimization engineer. I focus on diet, which is now a carnivore diet, um, and uh, consulting with people uh, how to resolve a lot of their chronic health issues using diet. I also focus on sleep optimization, and uh, detoxification protocols. In, uh, in my clinic, which is called Superhuman, we also offer uh, technologies such as this uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber behind me. We have whole body cryotherapy. We offer infrared sauna, Normatech compression, NanoV, um, cellular repair and DNA repair. Um, power plate whole body vibration therapy, along with hands-on modal modalities like massage and acupuncture and cupping, fascial stretch therapy, um, Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, our, our goal is to just help people not just survive, but to really thrive and, and be, be super. Yeah, right. So how does that, how does um, the nutritional side of things work when, when people are coming in and say they're interested in hyperbaric chamber or the other sort of services that you provide? Um, do you have a consultation and then start talking to them about diet and nutrition or how does, how do you, uh, you know, play that into uh, them when they come in for other services? You're absolutely right. People usually come in because they're looking for one of the technologies or a, a massage or acupuncture. And that always leads into the discussion of, well, why do you want hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Or why do you need cryotherapy? Mm -hmm. And usually it's a, it's a chronic issue. And I, I will always tell them, listen, you can do this. This is going to basically treat the symptoms and help, help your body recover from what's damaging it. But you got to start at the foundation and the foundation is going to be diet. Mm -hmm. And then, well, you know, most of them are eating plants. Actually, all of them are eating plants. And then we, we have to get into the very uncomfortable discussion of removing those plants. Um, and uh, that, that includes, of course, sugar, which is made from plants and vegetable oils or plant oils, which are also from plants. So to make things very simple, I just tell them, remove all plants and everything made from plants. And it's very interesting because I, I, I feel like some people are very disconnected with the uh, what they actually eat because they don't even realize that, for example, bread is from a plant. And mm -hmm. I've had people completely shocked when I tell them quinoa 
is a plant. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> they're plant seeds. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this this experience has been very um, eye opening. My my background is actually uh, in in film. I, mm. I'm, I come from a creative background, and um, I went down this path because I I used to live overseas. I spent 25 years of my life um, living in Europe and in Asia, and uh, living in Asia is when my health just fell apart. Mm. And uh, nobody could really tell me what was wrong, um, but uh, I I was aging so rapidly and had uh, uh, of course no energy, uh, brain fog. I had a um, migraine on this side of my head for a month. I was getting mm. tumors under my nipples. Mm. Uh, mm, falling asleep in high level meetings, uh, sleeping 12 hours a day and still waking up feeling tired, um, horrible digestion, horrible digestion. Mm -hmm. Food would just pass, well, plants would come, mm -hmm. like I would eat it and it would just come out whole. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was a... Uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine master that kind of showed me that there was a different way to heal. And he was a traditional Chinese bone setter, uh, uh, mm. the equivalent of a chiropractor here. Mm. And uh, he, he put me in basically a headlock and tried to tear my head off <laughs> with a thumb on one of my, my, my vertebrae. <laughs> But the next morning, my, my foggy head went away. I, I felt like I've got the first full night of sleep in, in maybe a year. Mm. The migraine went away. And um, I think uh, ever since then, I, I started down this path of trying to resolve problems that I didn't even know I had. Mm. Right? A lot of things that happen to people, they think that it's just part of life or they're just getting old but what i'm realizing is it, it doesn't have to be this way and uh so that's that's what that's what brought me to this point just a lot of research a lot of experimentation on, on myself and at the beginning also my friends mm -hmm. so once once this uh, uh miracle doctor uh as he was nicknamed helped me i started to find out that everybody around me that I knew also had health problems. And I found this instinct in myself that when somebody said they had a problem, I wanted to help them. And at this point I couldn't help them myself. So I would just drag them to the, um, this doctor, Dr. Yao. And uh, I think that, that kind of planted the seed when we had all the lockdowns, I had already started health coaching. I had moved back to here to Hawaii and was traveling for work and meetings. When we had the lockdowns, uh, I decided I didn't want to be in quarantine for a month each time I, I, I left my island. Mm. So I focused on the health coaching. And that just uh, parlayed into to what I'm, I'm doing now. Nice. So then, obviously, during that that journey you you came across carnivore but how, how did you specifically come across carnivore and then decide that this was for you and something you wanted to to pass along to your clients well it's it, wow it could maybe go back um six seven years you know i, I heard sugar is not good for you okay so i cut out sugar and then oh uh wheat's not good for you i think this is when i read uh Grain Brain by Dr. Mm -hmm. David Perlmutter. Mm -hmm. So I cut out all grains and I noticed I was starting to feel better and better. And then uh, I started to hear about lectins. And then so I started to dig into lectins and then I discovered Dr. Stephen Gundry's work um, and uh, removed all lectins out of my diet. And I, I felt better. I was still gassy and kind of bloated and 
Um, I don't know about these green snakes he always talks about. They didn't come out like <laughs> green snakes really all the time. Um, and I felt better. Uh, and I thought, well, okay, what else is there? And then I started to look at oxalic acid and listening and reading what Sally Key Norton had to say. So I, I started to remove plants that are high in oxalic acid. Um, and, you know, I was never very good at math. So I figured, okay, one plus one equals zero, zero plants. None of them were good for you. And during the lockdown, it was, it was a mixed blessing. I, I, I pivoted my career and I also pivoted my diet and lifestyle. The restaurants were closed. I had no temptations to go eat out with my friends. Um, the lines to get into Costco where I was buying my produce were like lines getting into Disneyland. And I said, well, forget it. I'm just going to go to the farmer's market. Uh, I stumbled upon a forage Hawaii that sells um, grass-fed meat and organs. Jesse runs it. And I just started buying a lot of grass-fed meat, grass-fed, locally raised meat. Perfect. And this was my chance to do another experiment. And uh, I was doing meat and fruit. And within the last maybe three years, two years, I've just, I, I'm not even interested in fruit either. So uh, that, that was pretty much my journey. And then, um, you know, when I was working as a health coach, I was focused, whatever worked for me, I would look at what people were suffering from and apply what I, what I learned to them. So first it was lectins and then it was oxalic acid, but oxalic, if you take those, two groups of plants out you it's just it's just meat and it just it's just so logical mm -hmm. um so yeah. that's 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 where i am today with with my diet although i i still do um consume eggs dairy mm -hmm. and raw honey mm -hmm. and yeah. the raw honey is for the um I make uh, ice cream out of butter and raw milk. Okay, nice. And, and uh, it, it tastes kind of bland without, uh, really? <laughs> without something in it. And that's the that's the only thing I can find that's acceptable. It's a little treat in there. I even find that yeah. raw milk just tastes like ice cream to me now. My my taste of my sensation of sweetness is so much more sensitive. I'm so so much more sensitive to it now that it just. I I mean I don't even know if I. I'd want anything sweeter, like like there's just a, just a glass of milk, it tastes like I'm drinking ice cream, and so, yeah, you know, I think just even just having that, just ice and that the the consistency of ice cream, I think that would just be fine for me now. Um, at that point, you might want to try it. I found a stick of butter, two yeah. cups of raw milk makes a really nice consistency. Nice, yeah, I'll have to try that. You um, blend it together if you have a high speed blender, and it it, it emulsifies everything mm. and then you pour it into an ice cream maker okay yeah try that <laughs> yeah out. that might be an acceptable treat for you i you know i'm fascinated mm. when i listen to you talk mm. about not even salting your meat anymore mm. what you just said about the raw milk yeah. um i i i tell my clients and patients about you no. and <laughs> when they ask well what do you eat the meat with and i say well just sea salt yeah or you could be like uh dr anthony chafee and and put nothing on it <laughs> well you know I, I i used to salt and i used to i i would salt to taste and i would want more salt and then it just sort of got less and less salt as i went and then eventually i just got to the point where i just didn't i didn't want it at all when i i without salting it it just tasted right to me and then with some salt on it, it tasted too salty I remember I had a piece of bacon uh, a couple of weeks ago and it was just like, I was like chewing on a salt lick or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, there's just way too much salt. 
and it was just a normal piece of bacon. And so, but that was just, that was just too salty for me now. So yeah, your, your taste change and like for the sweetness side of things, I, I've, I'm really sensitive to sweet, sweet flavors. Now. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, um, well, that's, that's great. So what sort of benefits have you been seeing for your patients? Have they been responding well to the carnivore diet as well? Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products that will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Behind. Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right, thanks guys. Well, Anthony, the ones that actually apply the carnivore diet, they have they sing the praises. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I have one patient and she had a knee replacement and she was in the process of having to get a, 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 her her other knee replaced. And after a lot of back and forth and a lot of debating, she says, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm I'm going to just eat meat. Mm -hmm. And now she's 100% back uh, on in action, right? She's a, she's a flight attendant. Her other knee is fine. Her, the one that she had replaced is, is, better than ever plus she had all these other problems that she didn't tell me about and and then she would come back and she'd say oh my gosh all my allergies are gone yeah and i said well i kind of told you that you know all these autoimmune issues would would go away and then she came back again oh my gosh my eczema is gone (laughs) right these kind of things um but it's the convincing them I don't know what it is about um, Hawaii, but everybody just is so uh, addicted to their foods. Yeah. So it's very difficult to get them to change their mind. Yeah. If, if it's rice or noodles or uh, poi, hmm. um, it's very difficult to get them to change their minds. And then the type of person that comes into superhuman uh, they're researchers and they're very mindful and they, they are trying their best to do help to be healthy and eat healthy. Mm-hmm. The problem is there's all this disinformation about plants being healthy. Mm-hmm. So, so many people have bought into this hook, line and sinker and they come in here when I tell them, you got to stop eating these plants and I can explain to you why. And I even have samples of oxalates that I, I've, I've um, collected from my body. I have um, mm. oxalates from, oh. from my urine. Where is that? What's the focus point here? It's over here. Okay. Um, I have calcified. You can see that there. Yeah. Calcified gallbladder and liver stones oh wow and that's clear evidence that plants are poisoning us Mm. um because those those oxalates are like shards of glass um microscopic in and around our cells and I managed to to get my body to start dumping them out. And oh yeah, I even have even from my teeth. So this stuff is forming on the bottom front teeth. And I can sh- I can I can sh- show people this and mm-hmm. send them the literature. I I found the study showing that 99 percent of all pesticides found in humans are from plants that mm-hmm. that study uh i found thanks to you mm-hmm. and um there are others as well but yeah that, that's the that's the battle is getting people to understand or even try it but the ones that try it 
they they um it's they 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 would say it's like a miracle that's yeah. happened to them yeah well that's great so i uh, i was interested in, in some of the other things that you guys do so like the hyperbaric oxygen chamber what is yeah what is that what what sort of benefits does that get like what sort of people would you recommend that for and what are the benefits seen from that I would recommend it to even somebody as superhuman as you, Anthony. Yeah. It's, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you're carnivore, because then you, you're not dealing with all these chronic issues. Um, uh, it will take you to that, that next level, give you that, that additional edge. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my, been my personal experience. Um, I've had, because I don't have that many people that are, carnivore I, I can't really say how it affects them but uh there's this one um patient and she reacted really well to the hyperbaric oxygen therapy it, literally her legs well, after she had gone carnivore um so she also flies a lot mm -hmm. and she would after each flight her legs would be swollen like mm twice the size of her normal legs. I mean, she's pretty skinny, but I said, listen, it's not the pressure in the airplane. When you're at altitude in, a, in an airplane, you're actually at negative pressure. So you're in a hypoxic environment. They pressurize the cabin, but it's still not strong enough to, to uh, compensate for the uh, lack of pressure at 40,000 feet. Mm. So you're going hypoxic and your, your cells are, suffering the consequences of it if i throw you in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber that will reverse that mm. and sure enough she came in after a flight she could hardly walk and her legs were swollen put her in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and she came out and her legs were pretty much back to normal yeah nice so what the hyperbaric oxygen chamber does is and i just had this discussion with a patient today it People think that it, it makes you breathe more oxygen, mm -hmm. but that's the misunderstanding. Um, your, your red blood cells are pretty much at full capacity now. Even if you get uh, an oxygen mask on you, you're only going to get another. Oops. Did my camera go out? No, you're, you're back. It just sort of blipped okay. for a second. Yeah. So uh, if you add oxygen, to your uh to your body through a mask uh, or something you're only getting an, an, another one to two percent of oxygen uh, being carried by your red blood cells what hyperbaric oxygen does is physics it's uh henry's law henry's law of physics if you compress gas over water or liquid it dissolves into that liquid and what we're doing is we're dissolving oxygen into your body fluids. That's your plasma. That's your lymphatic fluid. That's your interstitial fluid, spinal fluid, cerebral fluid. And we're oxygenating that. And then the pressure pushes that oxygen deep into the, the, the cells. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then when we decompress, the oxygen expands. And then that forces more oxygen into your into your uh, cells. Um, then we have uh, the hormetic response. Uh, it can be referred to as relative hypoxia. So you're going to from a high level of of oxygenation back to a normal level of oxygenation, and the body reacts to that as you going hypoxic, and it starts to activate all these repair and protection mechanisms. So one of the benefits is uh, stem cell creation and mobilization, mm. right? Even at 1.3 ATA in uh, without additional oxygen, uh, there was a study that came out this past summer and you get a fourfold mobilization of stem cells at the, at the basically the base pressure of 1.3 ATA. So stem cells, Everybody could use as much stem cells as possible, especially as we uh, are getting uh, older. Um, the studies have shown telomere 
uh, telomeres stop degrading and then actually will start to regrow. Um, you get um, angiogenesis, your, your, blood, your blood vessels start to, to grow. Um, and as we age, uh, our blood vessels start to shrink, especially uh, at the extremities, at, at the capillaries and the capillary beds. So that will just help going forward, getting more blood, carrying nutrients and, and oxygen to, to all your, your tissue. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's one of the best ways to treat traumatic brain injury. Mm. Um, people that have concussions or, or even accumulated shocks to the brain um, benefit greatly from hyperbaric oxygen therapy because a lot of that tissue is just being deprived of oxygen um, because of the, the, the trauma. Well, you, you know, well, who am I talking to? Here? <laughs> oh, no, it's good. And it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting oxygen to those areas. And it's, so it's allowing the cells, the energy to, to repair. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And yeah, for some, for somebody um, like you, that's in tip top shape, this will put you over the edge and it will actually uh, make you younger biologically. And if you ever get hurt, uh, then this will accelerate the healing. When we moved into this new location uh, where I'm at here in November, I actually dropped the cryotherapy chamber on my knee and pinched it between the, the cryotherapy chamber and the edge of the box truck. We were going up a hydraulic lift and I was behind it. The thing is just super top heavy for some reason. Yeah. And uh, my friend lost his grip. He was pulling it forward while I was trying to hold it up. And he, um, he lost his grip and the thing just tilted over. I tried to block it with my head using kind of my, my just uh, in jujitsu, we use our head a lot <laughs> to, uh, to uh, support things. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do that. I saw stars and I just fell backwards and the thing just mm. slammed my leg. I thought it was going to, was gonna like mm, cut it in half it, yeah. or something Ugh. but uh and i had already torn my acl in that leg too the the year prior oh good but i had severe bruising and uh pain and and swelling i managed to move everything and then i i started the the healing process of Norma to compression sauna nano v power plate and the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and Within two weeks, I was already back in the water surfing. So yeah. this is an injury where I thought, okay, I'm going to be out for at least a month. But yeah. it seemed, you know, I, I, I didn't get it diagnosed or anything, but uh, it accelerates healing. Yeah, very good. So what what pressures do you have to be at? Because I, I, I know I've seen different uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy places around um but um they all have different pressures and uh, it's my understanding that you have to have sort of a minimum pressure and that different pressures are are obviously better and some some if it's not most pressure like you said the 1.3 ata if it's not sort of at least that it, there's no real point is that right no uh the the study that i cited with the four fourfold mobilization of stem cells was in a soft chamber mm without supplemental oxygen. So room air, mm -hmm. 21, 22% mm -hmm. at 1.3 ATA for mm -hmm. 90 minutes. After 10 sessions, they had a fourfold mobilization of stem cells. Yeah, nice. So just, and then they're, they're experimenting in Israel of doing mm -hmm. even less pressure than that. Oh, and they're seeing results. Okay. So um, there's, there's the... Um, more, more is not always better. Okay. And more oxygen is not always better either because oxygen is oxidative and you're going yeah. to create uh, ox oxidative stress damage um, by introducing more oxygen. So it's a case by case basis. Okay. Um, I had somebody come in with who did a nose job in Korea and that went wrong and he was, it was turning black. He had necrosis. Mm. 
And um, his plastic surgeon doctor said, okay, 1.5 ATA. And we, we put him in the chamber at 1.5. And sure enough, the color came back to his nose and he uh, it, it healed. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and then we have, uh, for example, for brain trauma, if you go too high, if you go over 2.0 ATA, uh, blood vessels tend to constrict. Mm. And then, so that's not, that's not conducive to um, getting the uh, oxygen to the brain. So try to keep that below two, uh, 2 2.0 ATA. Right. But it really, it depends on the, the, um, what the person is needs mm -hmm. and, um, and low pressure doesn't necessarily mean, mean, uh, it's not doing anything. Okay. All right. And then, so let's say, you know, someone were, were otherwise just sort of, well, but just sort of wanted, wanted just to tune up or say like in the elderly, like, is this to safe for elder or older patients to do? And, and what would you suggest yeah. if they didn't have like a specific injury they were healing from, but they were just, they just wanted to optimize their health. What would you say for that, that cohort of people? Yeah. Uh, 1.3 ATA room air, just okay. like just maintenance and just uh, general um, uh, improving, optimizing of the body. I have one one client who is oh she must be in her late eighties, mm -hmm. and she was getting a little hypoxic. Her her hands were kind of blue and everything, and, she, and uh, we we put her in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and she's getting she got the color back in her hands. You know, otherwise she's she's a she's a real trooper, still driving around and active and jetting around the world visiting her children and going on these yeah. on these trips yeah. um so it's really for 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 everyone i think okay and getting yeah we oh we have autistic children that also come okay. in okay um but yeah and and everybody i talk I, that comes in i i really think that they would benefit from just removing plants from their diet Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like the way you 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 phrase it is plant free diet mm -hmm. because I've I've experimented with different ways to phrase it for people to understand and plant free is the best mm -hmm. because that means that means well people at the beginning they would say oh I've just been eating tons of meat Victor I'd be, oh great what'd you eat well I have just hamburgers all week mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to go well okay so. Um, what did you eat the hamburgers with? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, mm. okay, so what was the hamburger in? Well, buns. Yeah. Okay, what are those made out of? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so instead of saying, you know, just eat meat, I have to say, don't eat plants or anything made from plants. And that, that goes as far as high fructose corn syrup, of course, sugar. Um, and then the the vegetable oils, the plant oils, like I, I start to call them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it is funny. Uh, a lot of a lot of times people do like, well, I'm doing a carnivore diet, and it really what that means to them is they're eating a lot, a lot, lot more meat, and um, but they're still yeah. eating like a lot of other things as well, and and you sort of have to, and that's why I try to say, you know, it's just important what not to eat is what to eat. You know, like no plants or mushrooms, no sugar or any sweeteners, nothing. Uh, artificial and that goes for sauces seasonings and drinks as well and mm -hmm. um and even then you'll sort of get the like okay well what about coffee and it's like well it's a plant it's like oh yeah damn it you know and like and what about honey We're like well it's sugar and uh, I'm like god damn it yeah <laughs> like um you know what is stevia well it's a plant and it's a sweetener and so you know you you just go down that line damn it all right and so it really is just meat yeah. like just meat and like yes it's just meat um, you know, I don't, I don't care if people want to eat other things if they don't have a problem with it, but you know, I do think it's optimal to cut all these things out. And I think that people don't realize just how much these things affect them. 
and until they they get them out and uh, I, I see so many people time after time they're like, oh, okay i'm gonna try it and they're like wow i feel so much better and then what really drives it home for them is is when they go back and eat you know uh what they were eating before even if it was like clean whole foods sort of diet uh and then they they really don't feel good after that and yeah um, uh, this lady very nice ladies very lovely we did an uh, instagram live together davina taylor and she she was so lovely and so nice. And then she, you know, we had this whole talk and she's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for Carn World Carnivore Month in January. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm excited. Try this out. And and she did. And she she felt really good. And then in February, she she made this video so funny where she just says, she's like, all right, you know, people, I feel awful. I just feel awful. <laughs> I went out last night, dude, didn't even, didn't even sound like she had alcohol. I just said she had just a, a, a normal meal. And, you know, I just had just, you know, normal food had this Oh well, you know, let, let's try it out. I've been good. Everything's great. I feel wretched. I just feel, she was just so, so upset that she felt so bad. She's like, I feel hungover. I feel tired. I feel ill. It's like, I've never, never again. It's just, it's not worth it. Just not doing this stuff. Just not doing yes. it. She's like, I didn't realize how good I felt for the last month until right now, right when it's gone. And it's like, never again not doing it again. And, uh, and so, you know, I think it's really important, you know, just, just to try it, you know, I don't have autoimmune issues or anything like that, but I mean, I have, I put pepper on a steak and I feel it. My nose gets stuffy, you know, my, my face gets itchy and I just, I just don't feel great for the next few hours, you know, and, um, I, I don't like that, you know? And so I just feel like, no, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. So, you know, and, and some people have very serious uh, ramifications obviously and they can they can be very they can get very sick from that even just me i just just cut out vegetables and started eating a lot more meat night and day difference my my health dramatically yeah. improved you know yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just a small thing it wasn't just i'm being a wuss and just like oh i don't want a little something no i, I it, it was just night and day difference I, I felt like garbage before that i didn't have a specific illness or disease but i just felt like crap and my body wasn't working. I was just, I wasn't burning fat. I just, athletically, I just wasn't there. I just didn't have the right energy. I was working out, I was lifting weights, but I just, I was just, ugh, it just very lackluster, very poor energy, always hungry, didn't feel good, always sore, always aching. And, yeah. and then gone, just gone. And, uh, and I realized like, wow, I could have felt like this my whole damn life. I'm like, well, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah but um you know just just letting people see and then you know you want to add things back in go for it i mean the the amount of times that i've seen someone who you know just goes straight meat and water for a month or two and then adds something back in and says yeah i didn't really feel a difference i mean i could i could count that on the fingers of one head like it just doesn't mm -hmm. happen. like some people will add like a couple things back in and maybe it'll know they'll notice something and it, and it won't be bad enough that they that that uh, they'll stop you know one guy actually said that he he cut coffee and um and then for a month and he was carnivore and then after the month he sort of said he didn't really feel different so he added the coffee back in just to see and he said he didn't really notice a difference so he said just kept it in the coffee great now if he's working out a lot he might find that he gets a bit sore i find that i get sore so maybe that that the the difference just wasn't was subtle enough for him that you know didn't change much of his life great but i've never seen someone go back and do it like davina did and just have a normal meal and just be like yeah it didn't affect me i've never seen that now maybe it's out there or maybe people just haven't paid attention and realized what was going on but you know it's so many people will do that they'll cut out all these things and then they'll try to add things back in and it it doesn't go well for them. So they just tend to to stay on a more on the more strict side of things, really just just by listening to their body. Um, and um, you know, it could be that they can add things back in and do okay with it. I can't, you know, and so I don't. And and that's a lot of people that I find uh, are in that camp as well. Do you think that's just uh a short term, oh, I didn't feel anything, and it's going to catch up with them sooner or later. So, as far as like the coffee's concerned, um, it, it may just be that that it's just a bit too subtle, and and then you know sort of builds up a bit, and they sort of gets a bit of soreness and achiness and things like that. Um, I see people, you know, and it depends on how 
you know, if you're working out, if you're not really working out, you may not get those, you know, the DOMS, the delayed onset muscle soreness. But, you know, a lot of people I talk to, they're like, oh, I still get, I still get a bit sore. It's much better, but I don't get sore, but I still get a bit sore. And I say, it's like, okay, do you still drink coffee? Yeah, I do. Well, there you go. Try not drinking coffee. Uh, or people that that aren't sore and then they drink coffee and then they start getting sore again. They go, oh, you know, they, they can see that change 10, 20 minutes after they drink coffee. But if you're not doing that, then you may not you may not be seeing that effect. And so that's fine. It is having an effect, but it may not be as noticeable for you. Um, but, you know, everybody else, you know, if they it's it's very common for people to try and do something like Davina did which is, you know, just try, try having a normal meal. And I, I can't tell you how many people come back to me and just say never again, yep. just never doing that. That was just such a mistake, you know, screw these things. But it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good life lesson because it, it yeah. shows you directly what this stuff is doing to your body. And that, and that, you know, you, you have objective evidence that this stuff is not agreeing with your body. And, and now you, now you can feel a bit more confident and secure in your decision. Absolutely. I, yeah. I've had a guy who almost came crawling back after a, a, a trip with some friends to England where he was, he went back to drinking and just eating whatever. And, and he, he was a wreck when he came back and he said never again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's, um, I think it's um, it, it's 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 just one of those things that people have to learn for themselves, you know, that they have to um, they have to they just try it and and just see for themselves, and and that's all I encourage people to do is just try this stuff for yourself. Try cutting it out. See if you feel better. You will. Yeah. You know. And yeah. Um, you know, if you want to try some things back in, see how they affect you. If it's if it doesn't affect you in in such a way that you really care, then fine you know do that but uh, well what's the a check anyway yeah but what's the point you're just you're just putting that. packing peanuts into your stomach that are going to steal space from the actual nutritious food yeah and uh, and then fiber i mean i i'm starting to just say fiber is a is a toxin as well it stops absorption or it uh, it uh, blocks absorption of of, of nutrients that's why people say, oh, fruit's fine. You know, the fiber help slows the absorption. Yeah, well, you know, that's also, it's slowing the absorption of everything. So if you're eating fiber with your, your meat, then you're stealing the nutritional value out of that, that meal. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I, uh, and all plants are just filled with carbs anyway. So mm. what what's the point? There's no nutritional value and... Uh, or minimal nutritional value, and they're they're full of poisons. Even something as innocuous as as uh, lettuce, right? And you just had a, a podcast guest, and you were talking about herbs. So mm -hmm. for a while there, I was thinking, well, herbs, maybe why not? You know, but actually, you're right. They're really concentrated in in these um, plant poisons. Yeah. So, yeah, I altered what I'm I'm how I feel about even herbs now. Yeah, definitely. But for for the vast majority of people, if they could get their diet into into uh, under control, the technologies that we offer here are gonna you really feel them, and they they you react really well to them. Um, even something as simple as sauna. Do you, do you have a sauna at, at your your home or at your gym, Anthony? Uh, I don't. Um, but it's something I'm sort of interested in either, either putting in or finding a, a gym that has one anyway. Yeah. So I that's, like that's something you can just do 20 minutes a day, mm -hmm. right? The studies are saying now that 57 minutes a week is, is, uh, is I ideal. Okay. And, uh, so, so for, for anybody that's athletic, you just, after your workout, after your game, after whatever you do, just jump in the sauna 20 minutes and it'll make all the difference. And then if, if on an off day, you can still jump in the sauna mm -hmm. because uh, it, it, it stimulates a human growth hormone. Mm. So you, you're going to slow down loss of muscle. And if you are working out, the studies are showing um, 
16 fold increase in, 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 in muscle growth. It's really incredible. And we have an infrared sauna. So that adds the detoxification qualities as well. But uh, whether it's a standard sauna, a dry sauna, a steam sauna, or an infrared sauna, uh, they're, they're really effective. They, they activate um, heat shock proteins that are going to help uh, with uh, the repair of, of cells, recycling of dead, damaged, and senescent cells. Um, BDNF creation as well. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's what they call an exercise mimetic. Mm. So it mimics exercise without you actually having to exercise. And this helps with a lot of our uh, older patients, our kupuna, mm. as we say here in Hawaii, um, because they, I tell them, you got to lift weights. You got to eat more meat and you got to lift weights. And, um, uh, but if they're not doing that, at least they're, they're in the sauna and they're getting their heart rate up and they're getting their blood pumping and their, their uh, blood vessels are dilating. And, and uh, so that's, that's a good alternative for also for everyone, mm -hmm. but especially if you're athletic, um, the weather hasn't been very good. So I haven't been surfing a lot. Um, and uh, uh, I just, I don't realize how tense my muscles are. Uh, when I'm surfing every day uh, until I get into the, the sauna on an off day and everything just relaxes. Everything just feels like butter. You're going to, you're going to love it, Anthony. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, but people are coming in here because they've got arthritis, they've got back pain, they've got all these, all these issues, uh, eczema, psoriasis, and they're looking for a way to, to uh, heal. They, they really think this is going to heal them. And it's, you know, it, it might not be good for my, my bottom line to pay the rent, but uh, I, I, can't, I can't just say, oh, yeah, this is going to uh, cure you. Mm -hmm. uh, I explained to them that the, there's no, you can't sauna your way out of a, a poor diet. I think actually mm -hmm. you're the, oh, was it Dr. Eid? Is that mm -hmm. right? Is that her name? Yeah. Is she the one that was saying that you can't do things to get out of a poor diet? I don't um, remember, but possibly but I'm yeah. using that now. Yeah. I'm using that now. You can't cryotherapy your way out of a bad diet. You can't hyperbaric oxygen therapy your way out of a bad diet. You yeah. can't sauna your way out of a bad diet. Yeah. There's a good saying. It's that you can't outrun a bad diet. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, before before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you as well. So I, we we do hear all, all these things about sometimes that that uh, you get these different um, benefits from saunas and cryotherapy and and uh, you know cold plunges and things like that. Um, you said there was issue that there was benefits for growth hormone. You actually can get um, muscle growth and hypertrophy. It sounded like as well, like sixteen percent. Yes gross yeah that, and that's directly after a workout is that right if you go yep. into the after a workout you jump in the sauna uh 20 minutes to 30 minutes maximum mm -hmm. you don't want to do these marathon sessions then you're kind of defeating the purpose instead of it being a hormetic stressor uh it becomes an actual stressor <laughs> yeah okay um, yeah okay and then um is there is there a benefit of going back and forth between like cryo and and or or a cold plunge and and a sauna because I've heard some people say that if you go back and forth then you'll increase testosterone and growth hormone that way. Yeah, so I was of that opinion for a while, but mm -hmm. the the latest research just shows fifty seven minutes of of sauna, eleven minutes of cold exposure per week. Okay, and this going back and forth thing is really not not necessary. Do okay. the 20, 20 to 30 minutes in the heat and then and then jump in the cold and then you're good. So the same thing applies uh, to cold therapies mm -hmm. as with the heat therapies. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go into um, hypothermia, right? Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a cold plunge or an ice bath, three to five minutes, five minutes maximum, you know, you... you, you you and then after that you start pulling all the heat out of your core and 
it, it turns into a stressor. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a huge difference between cryotherapy and cold plunges okay. or cold ice baths. Cryotherapy is a way colder experience, but they're designed, the chambers are designed. So the chamber will drop to, depending on the manufacturer, to negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit and colder in the chamber. And you're only supposed to be in there for three minutes. You've got hand and foot protection, but it's designed to cool your skin. Yeah. And that sends signals to the brain and that activates all the repair and protection mechanisms. Um, Mm -hmm. There's no core temperature loss. Mm -hmm. So you can drop your skin temperature 20 to 30 degrees safely and get the benefits of that, that cold exposure, um, which, uh, far exceeds what you're going to get from a, an ice bath or a cold plunge. Mm. And a lot of these benefits aren't visible. They're all happening on the inside. But what's cool with um, cryotherapy is that we get people that come in that have had laser tattoo removal mm-hmm. or they have severe sunburn, mm-hmm. pop them in the chamber for three minutes, they come out and they don't get the blistering from the laser tattoo mm-hmm. removal. They don't have all that the, the pain. They can come back and uh, get worked on in half the time. Mm-hmm. So those are visible results from from cryotherapy. Yeah, great. Well, that's very yeah. cool. I've always been interested in those sorts of things, I, um, especially like hyperbaric. Um, and um, and and you mentioned DNA repair as well. Was that a, a, was that part? Would these things? Did that's that the that's that's the nano V. That's okay. like our our most technologically advanced um machine um i don't have i can't really show it to you but it's called mm-hmm. the nano v it's made by eng3 corp mm-hmm. you should probably talk to the the founder hans and um uh it uses the energy that your body makes to turn the water that you drink into the water that's in your cells mm-hmm. it's called the fourth phase of water Right. That's what makes the cytoplasm. It's uh, it's also called structured water mm. or exclusion zone water. And this is what lines the cells. It, it sticks to uh, hydrophilic surfaces. Um, it lines your blood vessels, your lymphatic vessels. And it's created really by the infrared energy that our, our bodies make. And what it does is it, it energizes the cells and it realigns them and it packs them very very, <laughs> let me see if the camera comes back on. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, it realigns the, the water molecules into a very, a very um, structured form where they're tightly packed together. That's why it's called exclusions on water. It forces mm-hmm. everything else out except the water molecules. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it looks like he uh, lost power. So he was having some blackouts uh, earlier. So unfortunately, we... Uh, uh, got hit by another one, but thankfully we got most of that there. So thank you everyone for joining. We'll, we'll end it there. Uh, hopefully you guys liked that and found that interesting. I was really, uh, interested in talking to Victor more about those, uh, cool little gadgets that he has. Um, something I was interested in looking at before, especially like the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, um, something that I want to look more deeply into the research on as it's, uh, it's interesting and, you know, something that, that maybe would be good for me or, uh, you know, my parents and and patients and things like that as, a, as an adjunct to uh, just feeling your best and, and living optimally. So thank you, everyone. Please do leave a comment, hit like and share with anyone who is interested in uh, optimizing their health. And um, if you're not a subscriber, please do think about doing that and you'll get uh, notifications of all my different videos. And thank you all for joining. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys.